Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be going over units, prefixes and scientific notation. Now, most of this you should know from National 5 and higher level, but it's worth looking at again anyway. Let's get started. Firstly, just a reminder that there are seven basic SI units, five of which we have used before and two which we don't really use in physics much. So the first five there, length in metres, mass in kilograms, time measured in seconds, current measured in amperes or amps for short, and temperatures, some temperatures measured in Kelvin. The last two, the mole and the candela, we don't really use much. So just a reminder that those things exist. And remember, when you're doing calculations, units should always follow your numerical answers. So make sure you're doing that by this stage. Moving on to prefixes now. So remember why we use prefixes is so that we can write down large numbers in a shorthand way. So you need to be familiar with the following prefixes in the table as these are not given in your exam. So there's only two new ones here that weren't in the higher course and these are at either ends of the table. So we'll go through them. So remember centi is the odd one out because it's a power of minus two or a power of two and not a power of three. And um, so an example is 30 centimeters is 30 times 10 to the minus two meters. Now, if we move up the way in terms of positive powers, then we see we have kilo times 10 to the three, mega times 10 to the six, giga times 10 to the nine, tera times 10 to the power of 12. And then the new one up this end is pita, which is times 10 to the power of 15. And that's given this symbol of capital P. Now, here's an example, two pita joules would be two times 10 to the 15 joules, which would be a lot of energy. Uh, and then if we move down the way in our table, so you've got milli is your times 10 to the minus 3, micro is times 10 to the minus 6, uh, nano is times 10 to the minus 9, pico times 10 to the minus 12, and then the new one this time down the bottom end is called femto, and it's given the symbol of small f. So an example is 15 femtometers, which would be 15 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. So when we're talking about sizes of nuclei and things smaller than that, and when we get into particle sizes, then that is where femto might come in. Just a reminder then that the SI unit of mass is kilograms, so there's no need to convert this to grams, even though it's got a kilo in front of it, because we always use kilograms for mass. Also, watch out for MS, that's milliseconds, and not meters per second, and the two look quite similar. And lastly, just a wee note on scientific notation, which says that it allows us to write down large numbers quickly and should be used instead of writing lots of zeros. So you shouldn't, by this point, be writing down lots of zeros in your final answers. They should just be written in scientific notation instead. And hopefully you're all fine with that. Now that's it for this video. I hope you found some value in it. If you did, give it one of these and make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.